When you look at the symptoms of menopause, mm -hmm. what I see that gets highlighted and profiled and media grabs onto, although that this is changing, is hot flashes. Right. But I can tell you, as a 54-year-old woman, like hot <laughs> flashes was, yeah, it was a thing, but can we talk about the mental changes mm -hmm. uh, that happen throughout the menopausal journey? Because th those were the changes that were affecting every relationship in my life. Mm -hmm. So when I look at the, the research and about how these estrogen receptor sites are still very active in us mm -hmm. post-menopausal through the, yeah, how do we, what is that telling us about menopause and how we need to do it different? Okay. So let's back up to the first part of your statement of, you know, forever it seemed like menopause treatment was defined by hot flashes. You were 100% right. Hormone replacement therapy was developed in the 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, through that pathway simply to get rid of hot flashes. Forever, we defined menopause symptoms by the presence or absence of vasomotor symptoms. 85% of us have them. For 20, 25, 30% of us, they're severe and life disrupting, but that was it. There was no talk around the brain changes, which led to mental health and cognition changes, the musculoskeletal changes, which, you know, with your background, you probably know what better than anyone with oh, arthralgias, yeah. arthritis, yeah. oh my God, frozen shoulder, all of that. Besides frozen skin, shoulder, hair, <laughs> teeth, gut, yep. you know, every single organ system in our body is affected and the old guard you know, who wrote the papers on face and motor symptoms, who really defined menopause by, you know, and everything else that we are going through at this age was attributed to aging, nothing to do with hormone depletion. And it's, that's where the new research is going. So the rough, the, the, the beautiful study that just got published in Nature Magazine by our friend, Dr. Lisa Moscone, who's a neuroscientist who in her entire career has studied the female brain and its relation to dementia and Alzheimer's. Okay, that is what she does. She pet scans brains left and right. She's at Will Cornell, she's amazing. She is the first person in history to look at the female brain by pet scan through the menopause transition, menopause brains, and looked at the, at, looked at the activity of, of estrogen receptors. And what we thought was estrogen receptors kind of fall off and die as we go through menopause. No, they actually upregulate. The brain is starving for estrogen. It's creating its own effort estrogen through peripheral conversion, you know, of estrone to estradiol and some testosterone. You know, it is dying for estrogen. And so the brain, parts of the brain, the hypothalamus, pituitary, the functioning, the cognition, the memory centers are lighting up like firecrackers in postmenopause because the estrogen receptors are like, help me, help me, we need estrogen. Yep. The old guard attributed the, we know that women are having cognition changes through menopause. They only attribute that to the loss of sleep from vasomotor disturbance. Lisa proved them dead wrong. This is literally due to the loss of estrogen in the brain that lubricates and makes everything work better. And we take that away and the brain stops dysfunctioning, all stops functioning normally. Also, we know great research coming out of Australia. We have a 40% increased risk of mental health disorders through the menopause transition. So in mm -hmm. perimenopause, when the levels become chaotic before they plummet, you know, in postmenopause, that's when we see the biggest disruptions to our mental health. Yep. And forever yep. that got dismissed as this is a time yep. in your life. You're stressed out. Teenagers are driving you crazy. Your parents are getting older. Your job is more demanding. You're not, you know, no, it is literally the disruption of neurotransmitters in our brains due to the chaotic fluctuations of our hormone levels. And here's the third thing that Lisa's discovered, and I've seen it also in the liver literature. FSH, as we know, right, follicular stimulating hormone, which is made in our pituitary that makes us ovulate, basically, to simplify it. FSH rises in perimenopause and then gets really high in postmenopause and stays there for the rest of our life. New data is showing that those FSH alone, without the estrogen depletion, is toxic to the liver and the brain. Increases oh, wow. the rate of, 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 of Alzheimer plaques yeah, in the yeah. brain. Just the FSH elevations. And if we can get those FSH levels down, those processes get easier. I mean, it's just explosive what's happening right now in the menopause world. I'm so excited. 
Yeah, so oh, there's such a great explanation. So does that mean that everybody should go on hormone replacement therapy? No, that means that everyone deserves an informed conversation about the particular benefits of hormone replacement therapy yeah. and how it may affect her life. I don't think it's yeah. for everyone. No, it's a medication. You need a, a full discussion of the risks and benefits. But what's happening in modern medicine is that a woman walks in with hot flashes, so classic vasomotor symptoms. She has a 10% chance of getting the diagnosis of menopause put on her chart. No period. It's a diagnosis. It's a diagnosis. Wait, I don't even that that right. seems so like a ten percent. <laughs> so if so, in that ten percent, if she's offered treatment, four to one, it's an antidepressant versus menopause hormone therapy. Yeah. The, you know, only six to depending on who you read, six to eight percent, depending because we don't track the compounding pharmacies, right? So it's only the FDA right. approved stuff. Mm. But right now, it's four to five percent are getting FDA approved HRT medications of women who are eligible. Yep. So do I think all women need it or want it or whatever? No, but I think everyone deserves an informed conversation, not only about the risks and not only about hot flashes, but about the cardioprotective and neuroprotective benefits. Yeah, I, I love that uh, that thought. And the way you phrased it is that every woman deserves an informed uh, conversation, which is amazing. 